Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So a couple of weeks ago I bought a Wacom drawing tablet and pen and today I'm going to talk about why I bought one and why you might want one as well. So the model I got is the one by Wacom in the medium size. And it's a decently sized drawing tablet for under 100 bucks, which was, I didn't want to spend too much money on it, on it because I didn't know if I really needed one. So this is a great option while still having enough space. It isn't the newest model that Wacom offers, but it isn't like a smartphone which you need to replace every two years because the new ones are so much better. So even though this isn't the very newest model that they have, it still is really good. So what I bought it for was just for Photoshop and maybe a bit of 3D modeling. I didn't really know which applications would support it. I didn't do much research in the beginning. So now I'm just gonna tell you my experience with it. So as you maybe can see, it isn't the normal green color which this comes in. Um, as the green didn't fit in my setup at all, I just painted it right away. Which of course gonna avoid my warranty, but I eat warranties for breakfast, so I don't care about that. Then when installing it on my Windows machine, I first had some problem because I downloaded the wrong driver. I didn't realize that this tablet isn't from the newest series, and so when I downloaded the driver for the newest series, it didn't work, but then I noticed that there, when you scroll a bit, more down on the page there are our drivers and with this it worked very well. In the driver software you can adjust many things about it. For example you can choose if you want it oriented this way or this way, depending if you're right or left handed. The little bar on the side, which by the way does nothing at all, it's just for decoration there, you can have it on either side you want. You can also change what the two buttons here on the pen do. And that's really handy, for example in Photoshop I have one set for Control alt z which goes back and the other one for right click, as these are the two buttons that I use the most in Photoshop. In other applications of course you can change that. The higher end models also come with a button on the back of the pen which you can use on the tablet as a rubber to erase things inside of the software or you can launch applications or other things with that button. But this version doesn't come with that so I didn't have to worry about that. You can also change inside of the software if you want to use this tablet in a tablet more mode or in a mouse mode. Now the difference is in the tablet mode you have this tablet here, you have the surface and it's the best way is to describe it that it works in an absolute mode. So if you touch the pen in a top right corner, the cursor is gonna click in the top right corner of your desktop as well. And if you, in other positions as well. So your whole screen just gets mapped on, on the tablet. If you hover over the tablets at around half an inch or a couple centimeters, above the surface, the cursor will start moving so you know where you're gonna click if when you press down. The other way you can use it, which in my opinion isn't as useful, is just kind of like a trackpad where it is in a relative mode, so no matter where you go down, you can just move the cursor like you were on a touchpad of a laptop for example. So now I'm going to talk a bit about what you can do with this tablet in Windows. Now of course you can just use it as your mouse, but that's not too practical. I do use it from time to time when I get tired from using the mouse for everything. I use the tablet, but it isn't like that fast of an input method. But what it is really great at is applications like Photoshop. Because, because the pen, it hasn't just a button in the front but it recognizes many levels of different pressure. So the Photoshop, for example, knows exactly how much you press down with your pen on the surface. And that 
allows you to draw much more defined as you can for example set up in Photoshop that if you only press lightly there's a very fine line which is partially transparent and if you press down more it gets wider and less transparent. That's just one version you can set it up. In Photoshop you can adjust what this pen adjusts which settings in the settings for the brush you're using and there are many many options that you can adjust there so it's really versatile. But Photoshop can of is the application which you already knew that this drawing pen is good for. Like artists use this stuff, that's what I thought. But there are other uses as well to use a drawing pen. For example this sculpting application, Sculptis, it's called. I really like it as it is freeware and you can very easily sculpt very organic shapes which you then can 3D print or model or use in your other models or whatever you want to do with it. And in this application the pen is great. It also recognizes how much you press down and it adjusts how strong the brushes are in there depending on how hard you press down and with right click you can easily move around so you only have to press a button and then can move around. This application is really made for pens to use as well. And there are a couple other applications which you can use, but most applications aren't made for use with a pen. For example, I tried video editing with a pen, but I stopped doing it after 5 minutes because it just didn't work in Adobe Premiere and so you won't be video editing with a drawing pen anytime soon. But not a use that is really nice with this just taking notes. In Windows there is this nice feature where you're on the bottom right if you have a drawing tablet connected there is like a little pad where you can click on and then a couple of options come. You can use the standard notes which you can use uh, otherwise as well but they have a drawing application which you can easily do sketches or if you're on a phone call you can take notes in there and later transcribe them and that's really useful. You can also use it together with like Adobe Acrobat, PDF readers to digitally sign documents without having to scan anything. Or also to just do like homework. I like instead of just writing on paper, you can write with this pen inside of an application. It's the same process, so the learning should be the same, but you can do it in front of your PC and then you can just erase it in the end and don't have to throw away loads of paper. So in my opinion a drawing tablet and pen is really versatile and isn't just something for artists which work on their computer but also for just individuals which maybe want to draw sometime and use it for different applications. And at a price of under a hundred bucks it isn't that expensive for the, of a purchase. Sorry, and I didn't understand the question I heard. And at 100 pups it isn't too expensive and similarly priced as some more higher end mice. And so it is something you might consider if you want something more than just your everyday computing experience. If you like this video please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe. I also have Twitter and Instagram handles linked down below and a brand new website that you can check out for some more behind the scenes footage. Thanks for watching and until next time.